Action cams, you know them, you love them, you strap it between your titties to capture footage of you whipping around on your mountain bike or getting pitted in the barrel of a wave bra. But if you're just walking around out and about in town, maybe on a crowded sidewalk, you don't want to be that guy or gal with a giant GoPro strapped to your chest, holding a separate boom mic, talking at an above room level volume to let everyone know, hey, I'm a content creator, influencer, or YouTuber, check me out. I personally don't like that, so things like the Go 3 are pretty cool because it's a tiny little camera that's very inconspicuous. People don't even notice that you're wearing it. They have a mount for the bill of your hat. They have one for your chest that goes on the inside of your shirt. But this little stick of gum looking ass camera can shoot in 2.7K, 30 frames per second, or 1440p, 50 frames per second. In case you're thinking, Kevin, those numbers are pretty gosh darn low in comparison to a GoPro, you're right, but this is also substantially smaller, lighter, and does some cool shit that the GoPro doesn't. Let's get it. The packaging is prompting me, please tear here, but I physically cannot because there's a piece of tape that's blocking my finger from being able to humanly do that. Doing that one-handed was incredibly smooth and effortless. I recommend it to nobody watching the video. I got a little bundler kit off Amazon. That's why there was an additional outer box. This is the actual camera itself. And then you have a quick release mount. Pretty surprised that there's only two boxes considering I bought a bundle. I thought I had multiple pieces or items. Pretty minimalistic, simplistic branding, all white box. If you wanted to pause to read some of the key features, uh, can you autofocus? There we go, for the good people. A little pinch and zoom action. And your contents of the box. If any of this is missing, Houston, we have a problem. Also showing you some different mounting options, which I love. It's so tiny. You just have it on your shirt, very inconspicuous with the magnetized necklace that goes inside your shirt. So much less conspicuous than having a chest strap and then a massive GoPro, probably with the media mod and a microphone. Dang, it's actually even tinier in person. That's what she said, unfortunately. So you have this little cutout, which is going to hold your camera in place. And then this thing is muy poquito. You do have this translucent sticker that will need to be removed before use. Oh, that's cool. And it's just held into the box with a magnet, which is actually strong enough to open up this little booklet. It. And underneath that flippity flap, you've got your user guide. Pull up on this foreskin. You are going to have documentation inside of this box. And then you're going to have the actual dock or cradle for the camera, which will extend the battery life from 40 minutes to 170, I believe. A little threaded mount, standard quarter inch. There were some more goodies inside of that secondary box that I want to go over now. Four pieces of documentation. You have your safety guidelines telling you not to choke people out with the USB-C cable or to throw this thing at your buddy like a Frisbee. Your quick start guide, which is what most people are going to go directly to if they're going to read anything in the box. It'll be this of stickers if you want to sticker bomb the side of your bleh, whatever I, I'm just, you know little silica gel packet make sure you dispose of that properly and this is a clip mount which is pretty sweet if you want to clip this onto the bill of your hat or something that is flat maybe the visor in your car basically anything that you can clip onto this will mount to your camera probably you're going to wear it like a necklace then you've got that quarter inch threading standardized mount this is a little 45 degree angled piece for the magnetized necklace very short usb-c cable just rubber not microfiber or braided probably gonna end up chucking this out and just using one of my own for charging. The warranty card is incredibly vague because it goes over all their products. It doesn't really tell you what your product carries, just between zero to 12 months, but we're going to look at the terms and conditions on their website, find out exactly what this model carries. This is an interesting piece of documentation, a waterproofing guide. What to know. Water's bad for electronics. Step one. Step two, keep the water out. So it's really only one page of instructions because each concurrent page is going to be a different language. So we're going to start with English, my native tongue. If you wanted to pause and read this yourself, you you may do so now. Let me go lotion my hands. I just realized they look like lizard scales because they're so fucking dry. Give me a second. I've been shooting those jet ski vlogs on the other channel and my hands have been super dry because of the salt water and all the abrasive sand and well, just being outdoors. My skin doesn't like them. Now I'm all greased up, oiled up and we're good to go with the review. So this is magnetized. That's how it's actually going to snap your camera into this cradle or charging dock, which does also control the camera itself. Oh my goodness, a good amount of resistance to get this up and down. This is your mounting puck, which can be used as a necklace and it holds your camera like this on the inside of your shirt and then this is a locked off stationary mount very nice that will go with that quarter inch threading that we saw on the other end and this is metal feels incredibly sturdy and this is guess what magnetized as well very quick mounting to the camera as opposed to a gopro where you have to unscrew every time you want to switch mounts from head to chest to wrist to bleh, helmet cam whatever and with the specific bundle that i got which will be linked in the description below it also comes with this quick release mount the quick release mount sorry about the audio quality. I'm trying a new configuration. It's called not giving a fuck. It's very useful if you've been using
using GoPros for years because this right here is the universal mount for pretty much all GoPro attachments. So you can use this part, which is magnetized and then has these two snap-on pieces to be able to quickly get your Go 3 in and out on pretty much any GoPro mount that's on the market. It's super sweet. There's all these included accessories, but they're gonna be laying pretty loose because there is no included carrying case like you get with the GoPro 10. So I'm just gonna be throwing these loose niblets in here with its brother. Something I really don't like is this camera is completely unusable, basically ships in a brick status unless you use the application. Unlike a GoPro, which gives you the option of using the GoPro Quick app, spelled Q-U-I-K. It's gotta be all neato Toledo. But that application is not mandatory to use your camera right out of the box, as where this camera will say on the back of it that you need to activate a pod to use it. Yeah, you can't even record with this camera without using the application. Stinky. Another interesting note, there is no way to charge just the camera. There's no USB-C port or anything like that. You have to plug it into that cradle, that action dock. I'm going to call this thing so many different names, but we all know what we're talking about. And then this has the USB-C port on it. Oh, that's satisfying. You press that release button by the USB-C port while simultaneously pulling up to break contact with the magnet, but there's no real good place to grab it other than around the housing of the lens, which really isn't ideal, but that's kind of the only good grab point here. Human hands will only be able to grab it from the actual lens while pressing that release button. <laughs> okay, screw GoPro mounts that we've been using for since the Civil War. Check this out. So this is magnetized, but at first I was thinking, okay, magnets, that's cool and all, but we're talking about action sports situations here. We're whipping around on a mountain bike or I'm paintballing. Maybe this thing gets hit with a paintball. If it's just held on with a magnet, it's going to knock it right off the damn mount. But this actually has two secure clips on each side, but they are quick release. Let me show you how it works. So the magnet's going to start sucking the bottom of the actual deck or dock, and then these little metal clips are going to line up on each side and snap it into place. There we go. Made me look like an idiot. And then to get it out, you're just going to push down on these buttons, these release tabs on each side. Great little mounting design. This plastic pad is to be reused to cover up your sticky pad, which is actually covered right now. But if you peel this back, it's going to be an adhesive. And you can stick this onto any surface and then use this dust cover, this protective cap to, well, okay, not do that, but be able to reuse this cup so it doesn't collect dust and dog hair and finger oils and stuff like that. And furthermore, this mount isn't just for the action cradle. It's not just for that dock. It's also for the the tiny little camera itself. Making me look like an idiot. There we go. Now we're in it to win it. Clean design. Warning sticker is letting you know you can burn your shit off with prolonged skin contact. It expels your exhaust from the back. You should be fine though. But another cool little mounting trick is the fact that since this is a magnet on the back, you can snap it against anything that is metal. So put it up against a light post or a pole and then record yourself doing something wild. And I've been seeing people do some really cool stuff with that magnetic mounting, such as sticking it on the side of cutlery, knives while they're doing cooking tutorials. Just crazy stuff like that. As cool as the necklace puck is, it is my favorite mount that comes in the box, and there's three of them in the box, which I do like that variety of included accessories, because when you buy a GoPro, you have like one or two in the box, and then if you want anything else, chest mount, head mount, you're looking into the aftermarket on Amazon. My only complaint with this little puck, well actually I have two. First of all, the only way to ratchet this thing up or down is basically just to wrap it around itself and press the rope into this little rubber plunger on the side, but that doesn't stay, so when I start riding around on my scooter or God forbid the jet ski where I'm bouncing around, it lowers itself down to its lowest possible position, which is right here. So I hope on their next version or iteration, they have a better little clasp mechanism for adjusting the height of the necklace. The next one is going to be the magnetic accessory that snaps onto that puck in case you want to have the camera angle downward or upward. But using this puck, you have about 30% of the magnet strength of the regular puck. It doesn't feel like it has enough magnet strength to hold the camera between your shirt as where this puck does. I have no issue even jumping my scooter off a curb, and I don't think my camera is going to pop off or anything. With this one, I do. You actually lose uh, most of the actual magnet strength by using this accessory, which is weird. One of the major differences of the Go 3 versus its two predecessors is the fact this one has two microphones, a front facing and an upward facing. So one facing up towards your suck hole, your mouth, while you're given commentary, and one facing the action of whatever you're recording, the subject. That's pretty cool because it can actually do a pretty good job of volume balance balancing all that, processing that on board, instead of just having one microphone try and handle everything. And it just sounds like a blown out mess. All right, this is standard 
stabilization. I was just on high and out standard. The built-in microphone is actually pretty good in my opinion, not only at capturing my voice, so I have a little bit of low end or presence. It's not just hollow and tinny. It actually sounds like a dynamic voice. The software wind resistance mode actually does a pretty good job of rejecting wind at about 35 miles an hour. And it's a good thing that the internal microphone is good. It's high quality because there is no other option for you. You can't plug in an external microphone like you can with the GoPro where you get the media mod and then you have a jack to be able to run a lapel mic up your shirt or run a shotgun mic. Which is like a tried and true motor. It's been around for ages and it's just a great, fantastic platform. Uh, this is going to only be using the internal microphone, which isn't a huge deal because it sounds pretty good. And if it doesn't already exist on Amazon, there's probably already some foam little wind socks to put over this thing to cut down wind even further. Or you could make your own, get some foam and stick it over it. Now there is no crush or impact resistance rating on this camera. However, the actual cradle or charger dock is IPX4 splash resistant, splash resistant only, so don't really get that wet. It's not waterproof or resistant or anything. The camera itself is is going to be waterproof to five meters. Anything deeper than that, if you're going to be diving with it, make sure you get a waterproof case for it. A submersible case, preferably not one built by Stockton Rush. Controls are incredibly simple. On the camera itself, there is only one button. It is going to be the power button, which you're going to hold down for three seconds to turn the device on and off, or a quick press to start and stop recording. Also, if you have quick capture mode enabled like I do, it's enabled by default. All you need to do is press the button once and it turns it on, starts capturing in about three seconds. And then when you hit that button again, not only does it stop recording, it turns it off again as well. So just a one touch use. Inside the action pod or dank cradle or ripper box or whatever we want to call this thing, you have the USB-C port on the side, which will charge both the case and the camera itself. You do have this unlock button, which is to get the camera out. Then you do also have a swivel or flip up camera, which is awesome if you're trying to shoot some vlogs and you want that selfie cam. It feels pretty damn secure, but it is a good amount of resistance to move it. So if you're trying to do this one handed, kind of finicky. There is three buttons on the device itself. This is to start or stop a recording or take a picture, the power button, you're gonna hold it down for three seconds to turn the device on or off. And then you have a mode switch button beneath that. You will have magnets on the bottom for those quick release mounts. And overall, the case feels pretty damn good. It has this soft touch or rubberized material instead of just being some cheap feeling plastic. I have no complaints here. With the device turned on, you are gonna have status, including battery and record time on top, as well as your recording mode bottom left and your field of view in the bottom right. By pressing this button or swiping up from the bottom, you are gonna have your capture settings. And this is one of the big limitations in fact, the biggest one of this camera versus something like a GoPro, I just realized the microphone wasn't facing my mouth or suckle, is the limitations in maximum resolution and frame rate. For example, the GoPro 10 Black can shoot 5K or up to 120 frames per second. My preferred mode with that camera is 4K 60 Super View. As with this camera, you have a maximum resolution of 2.7K and a maximum frame rate of 50, which is unfortunate, and that's only in 1440p and 1080. If you're going for that 2.7, you're in 30 frames per second, which in an action camera, isn't ideal. For stabilization, you have off, standard, high, and max. And I do have to say that this is a very responsive touchscreen. Swiping from the right is going to have more of your capture settings, such as a manual mode where you can adjust your white balance and your light exposure. Swiping down from the top is going to give you your quick settings. And last but not least, swiping to the right from the left is going to give you your videos and pictures that you've collected, which thus far is jack shit. As for stabilization and no scenario whatsoever, should you ever turn off stabilization because your footage is going to look like this? It is incredible incredibly choppy and disorienting and you can't use this for anything. Standard mode is pretty good, I would say adequate for walking, jogging, and most outdoor activities, but if you're going to be getting bucked around sideways, I would bump it up to the middle mode. I didn't notice any difference, honestly, between the middle and highest mode when it comes to image stabilization, so I'm just going to leave it in that middle or standard mode that it defaults to. Swiping over from the right will give you some additional shooting modes, but let's be 100% honest with each other. When you're using an action cam, you're probably just going to keep it in the standard shooting mode. Now, unfortunately, this just loops over itself and just continuously infinitely scrolls instead of stopping at the left and stopping at the right. You have photo mode, of course, megapixels and all that other tech spec stuff on screen. Video, your primary mode, free frame video, which used to be called this, but it's the same mode. Time lapse, which I'll probably never use because this has really subpar battery life to do a time lapse video. It wouldn't be a very long time lapse. Time shift mode, slow motion, which again, this only hits a frame rate of 50, so I'm not shooting any slow-mo footage because it would look really choppy. 
copy, loop recording, which is just going to continue folding over itself, star lapse, which gives you a star trail effect, why? Interval, which is a burst of photos, and then HDR, high dynamic range, which is photos, not HDR on video. So I'm just going to stay in my comfort zone, which is video. Brother, I am deep in this website and I cannot find the specific warranty period. Uh, I'm going to assume one year, but I hate to assume. Oh, well, they do have an affiliate program for all you influencers and content creators if you're trying to make a quick buck. Now they have the care and extended warranty program. Control F warranty. Okay, we've got seven results. Let's meet them and greet them one by one. Mm. Okay, here we go. Here I am searching the back alleys and it's right here on this front street, right here on this avenue. Your camera is going to come with one year of coverage. However, you can double that by joining their extended warranty program. What kind of con trickery do we have to meet for that? Oh, Okay, uh, the fine print says they want you twerking in a handstand to double that warranty. Actually, it doesn't say any of that. I just can't find the terms and conditions of extending the warranty. That's okay, I'll take the one year. As with any action cam, you have to keep in mind any overheating issues. I've heard other reviewers say that after about 25 minutes or so, this bad boy is gonna overheat and shut down. I haven't experienced that at all, and I've actually made it to about 38 minutes before the battery died with no overheating issues whatsoever. But in my use case scenarios, it's usually strapped to my chest when I'm moving forward on either a scooter or jet ski, so it's getting a lot of cooling from the wind, from the air. But if you're just sitting in a hot car or something, yeah, I could definitely see this thing overheating because it was very warm to the touch or on my chest, I should say. It was cooking my niblets. But that's not just this camera. Pretty much every action cam I've ever used, including my GoPro 10 Black, it will overheat if I'm recording at 4K60 for ooh, about an hour or so and I just sit there not moving. It's, it's gonna die. As for the verdict, this is a really cool piece of tech and I think it would make a great supplementary or secondary camera. However, if you're only going to have one action cam, 10 out of 10 times, no, 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 no. We'll say 9 out of 10 dentists recommend. There's one that's like, mm, no, the Go 3 is a solid bet over the GoPro 10 Black. However, in most use case scenarios, the GoPro is going to trump this device. The Go 3 does a couple of things that the GoPro simply cannot, such as those magnetized mounts, which are a quicker and easier design. And this is substantially smaller and lighter, and I really do like that necklace puck. It is probably one of the coolest action cam mounts I've ever seen. Having said that, setting this down, you're limited on internal storage as where you can get a micro SD card for a GoPro. There is a vast aftermarket with GoPros because they've been on the market forever and they are indeed the golden standard. They're what everyone thinks of when you think of an action cam. You can get a camera that shoots all the way up to 5.3K and 120 frames per second. Not at the same time. You have to pick and choose resolution or frames per second. But that was the biggest limitation that I noticed using the Go 3 is that watching back all my footage, it was noticeably uglier, not as crisp, because the resolution is almost half. It's 2.7K, not 4K 60 like I generally shoot. And what's more over than that, you have to pick and choose. Do you want 1440p or 2.7K 30? There is no use case scenario that I can recommend using 1080p on the Go 3 camera whatsoever. Now, I personally would run 1440p 50 frames per second and then upscale in your editing software and it'll look crisp. However, 2.7K and 30 looked good and didn't look choppy either. For 30 frames per second, it looked a lot smoother and closer to 60 frames per second than I thought it would. But other than more durability, more waterproofness, a bigger aftermarket of accessories, longer battery life, higher resolution, higher frame rate, a better application. I'm running out of fingers over here, but the GoPro is definitely a better overall camera. I'm going to save you a little bit of time and potentially money by telling you that now. However, the Go 3 from Instacam 360 or Insta360, they shorten their name, is a really cool small camera. And I think it would make a good secondary camera for capturing a secondary angle, maybe looking back at you and your hair is blowing in the wind on a mountain bike or something like that. Probably not blowing in the wind because you should have a helmet on. But if I could only own one action cam, for sure, I'm going to go for a GoPro. I just listed on this many fingers why I'm not returning this. This is a killer camera and it does a few things that I wish GoPro could get on board with. Those magnetic mounts, having a separate charger pod, and then a smaller camera like this is just a cool design. However, you only get 40 minutes of battery life in this configuration. You can't expand the onboard storage with an SD card. The Insta360 Go 3 is linked in the description below as well as the GoPro 10 Black and maybe a couple of other action cams that I've tested personally and was very satisfied with and would recommend to my audience. And I'll see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow.
Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach and assist them as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.